Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Now we begin the lecture 10, which is based on standardization of parameters of natural dyes. It is very important and I have been mentioning that standardization and optimization is an essential part of natural dyeing process. Now let us go beyond that and let us try to understand what are the major drawbacks with natural dyes? Color fastness issues that is wash and light fastnesses, shade matching issues from batch to batch, batch to batch differences in color, shelf life issues and sourcing issues. Now we have kind of spoken about color fastness that how light particularly UV light and very harsh washing condition can alter the color of natural dyes and can even fade the natural dyes. Shade matching as what can be easily done with synthetic dyes is again a problem with natural dyes, but now with defined recipe this problem has been overcome. And therefore, there is a need for standardization because anything and everything mixed in any kind of uh, volumes or weight will not give consistent result. Why? Because natural dyes from different sources have different dye content. So, what it boils down to that we should find out first the dye content of the available natural dye and then start calculating according to the weight of the fabric other auxiliaries and the dye. Therefore, then there will be no problem of shade matching and even from batch to batch match matching could be done when these uh, issues are overcome. That means, when we standardize a procedure or when we optimize a procedure, we are fixing the recipe. And as we saw in the last lecture that freeze drying is giving a good shelf life, we should opt for such techniques rather than semi solid or liquid dyes which can be attacked by microbes more readily. And Another thing that I have been mentioning, mentioning all along is that we should look for sources of natural dyes in the local area. That would prevent us from being dependent on the supply chain. How to combat the drawbacks? Because if there are drawbacks, there are also solutions and we have to look for solutions for these uh, drawbacks. Batch to batch testing of dyes because if we are sourcing natural dye or if we are extracting natural dyes from different raw materials, then we need to test the dyes. Making quality checks at all levels of production. Process improvement to maintain the color and save dyes from getting discolored. That means, it should not get faded it should not get destroyed, it should not be infected by microbes and therefore, we need to protect them and bring quality management system in practice. What was practiced earlier was very primitive and very immature, but now professionals are going in for quality management system so as to get quality product. When I started hunting for standards for natural dye, how do we assess 
the purity content of the natural dye or how do we test any natural dye whether it is of natural origin or whether it is synthetic. If the natural dye is pure or if the natural dye has some contaminant all these questions were bothering our mind. I started hunting for standards for natural dyes. I looked in American standard ASTM, I looked in AFNOR, French standards, DIN that is Deutsches Institute for Normung and Spanish standard, British standard, even Bureau of Indian standards and no standards were av available for particularly natural dyes. It was very disheartening. The idea of making testing protocols for natural dye therefore emerged in our minds. Being in feet laboratory IIT Kanpur and working as analytical chemist, I started making my own testing protocols for natural dyes. Identification of natural dye on the basis of its structure through spectroscopic methods and chromatographic methods looking for adulterant usually a very serious problem with highly priced natural dye by chromatographic methods. And this problem comes mainly when we are dealing with dyes which have synthetic analogues and they are so closely resembling the structure that it is sometimes not possible to identify them by just single one method. Major challenges that became my research problem and that was my integral part of research that we started making natural dye testing protocols. Since no standards were available on natural dyes, testing was not very easy. One had to work very hard to establish each chromatographic and spectroscopic method. Repeatedly we had to test the samples which were na of natural origin and which was from synthetic background. Checking its repeatability, its reproducibility of results was a major task that led to formation of testing protocols by setting instruments parameter. And then finally, to get third party verification for our methods from the other laboratories. Because I may find a test method which is easy to identify, but there should be if somebody else can repeat it and should be able to repeat that test method for doing a similar test. And that is called third party verification. So, we got two, three laboratories to test our samples by the methods that we had developed. The process of initiation of standardization begins from selection of appropriate plant material for extraction, if not taken into account can lead to consistent or rather inconsistent dye content. That means, if we do not take a plant part which has the maximum amount of dye content and we use any other part, it is not going to be of any consequence. Appropriate usage of mordant, right type of mordant, use of auxiliaries, all this is going to lead to a foolproof process and can make many significant difference in the hue. Hence, utmost care should be taken for proper selection. Dying time, pH, temperature should be compatible with the stability of the dye in order to get desired and repeatable dyeing outcome. Standardization of parameters for natural dyes is crucial to ensure consistency, reproducibility and quality in the dyeing process. Natural dyes are derived from plants, animals and mineral sources 
and their color can vary based on factors such as plant variety, growing conditions, extraction methods and the processing techniques. It is not easy to ensure consistency, reproducibility and quality. So, we have to pay attention to the reproducibility of the natural dye, whether we are able to reproduce the results perfectly again and again is what matters. So, we have to look to achieve standardization, it is essential to control and monitor various parameters and here are some of the key aspects with that we should consider. Selection of proper raw material, as I just now mentioned that standardization cannot take place unless we have chosen the right plant material, the right plant part for getting consistent source of raw material, whether it is plants, insects or mineral to minimize variation in color. The harvesting and the cultivation practices that are being done. Control factors like harvesting time, growing condition and geographical location to ensure consistent quality in the raw materials. If we remember all this, then it becomes easy for us to look at the standardization process more seriously. The main parameters for considering in standardization is that extraction methods that is standardize the extraction process to obtain dyes from raw materials. Factors such as solvent type, temperature and extraction time can impact color intensity and quality. In the last lecture, we did discuss about standardization of extraction method. We looked at many extraction methods and we also looked at the benefits of each one of them, the drawbacks of each one of them. So, accordingly we should choose the method of extraction which is beneficial for us. Purity of the extract also matters. So, we need to analyze and standardize the purity of dye extract to ensure consistent color results. Impurities in extract can affect the final color and dyeing properties. So, it is very important that at every stage we need to do the standardization, we need to analyze and unless and until we are doubly sure we should not proceed further. Even maintaining pH levels monitor and control the pH level during the dyeing process as pH can significantly influence the color outcome. And this we have seen in the few past lectures that pH plays a very major role. It is not to be taken very easily that even if the pH is uh, different, it does not matter because the color will not get faded. Some of the anthocyanin dyes we have seen get adversely affected by altering the pH. So, standardization of the pH of the dye bath to achieve reproducible results is essential. The significant parameters that need to be standardized are the modenting process. Now, in the very beginning, in the first lecture, I have shown you that how pre mordant and post mordant of the same dye extract can give different hue or colors. Therefore, it is important and imperative that we develop standardized mordanting procedure to enhance color fastness and improve dye absorption. Mordants like alum, iron or tannins can affect the final color and the durability, even it can take care of the fading effect. Dying conditions that is controlled temperature, time, 
agitation during the drying process is also to be considered. Standardize these parameters to achieve consistent and reproducible color results. Color measurements, once having achieved standardized, how do we know? With the naked eye, we can never make out whether the color is the same of batch to batch dyeing processes. So, there has to be color measurement by a particular color C lab spectrometer and the color measurement device or spectrophotometer to quantify and standardize color is an essential part, which defines the color spaces such as SIE LAB for accurate color representation. Just the way we have IUPAC nomenclature for any organic compounds name, similarly to define any color we have the CIE LAB values. In all over the world it is accepted and what can appear to be a light pink to you can be pink to me and this kind of description does not hold good any longer. People look at the C lab value of the light pink and dark pink and they decide they are different. So, there is no anomaly of the opinion. Testing and quality control thus becomes mandatory. Testing and quality control, implement regular testing and quality control measures to ensure that each batch of natural dye meets predefined standards. So, when we repeatedly test and we look at the test results, we understand that this is so important. This may involve color matching fastness testing and other relevant assessments. So, testing at every level is very important. In order to get quality product, documentation and record keeping, to maintain a detailed record of all the processes including raw material details, extraction methods, dyeing condition and quality control results. This documentation is crucial for traceability and continuous improvement. If we do not keep a document, if we do not have a record, we will not know what process changes we had made in the last few times and whether it still requires any further improvement. So, any scientific information should always be do documented and I am sure in your laboratory exercises you maintain a laboratory notebook where you note down each day's experiment. It is like that, that record keeping of all your experimental details related to natural dyes should be documented and written down. Overall standardization of natural dyes is what is required. Research and development stay updated on research and advancement in natural dyeing processes. Continuously refine and improve standardization procedures based on new findings. You cannot say that now all the research is done, so now there is no scope of improvement. There is always a scope of improvement and people all over the world are actually doing lot of research and those must be read and implemented because all the new work that is coming up is for the betterment of the natural dyeing process or natural dye extraction. So, one has to keep the eyes open and read the literature and imbibe that processes in the regular experimental conditions. Education and training, train personnel involved in the dyeing process to ensure that standardization protocols are followed consistently. If you have somebody novice, then he will do all erratic experiments 
which will not lead to any standardization. Therefore, a trained personnel is required who is trained very well in the dyeing process meticulously and follows the standardization protocols very consistently. By addressing these parameters, producers can work towards standardizing the natural dyeing process and improving the overall quality and reliability of natural dyes in various applications. So, unless and until we are hell bent upon standardization of natural dyes and the optimization of natural dye process, we will never achieve the perfectness. Because random sampling, random dyeing cannot lead to any result which can be repeated from batch to batch. And this was earlier not taken so seriously because quality control was never the main focus. The main focus uh, in the earlier times was to get different colors and colors that can remain for some time which will not fade by light or wash, washing and that was the main focus. The focus was not on the quality product, but now things have changed and quality has become very important as important as the environmental impact and sustainability. What is the process flow chart? If we want to practice standard standardization process, how do we go about? The standard process in natural dyeing involves several key steps to extract color from the natural sources and apply it to textiles or other materials. Here is a general outline of the standard natural dyeing process. The first one is that we should select the raw material properly. So, selection of raw material, choose plant, animal or mineral source for natural dyes, consider factors such as color intensity, availability and sustainability. Next comes the preparation of raw material, clean, prepare raw material for extraction. This may involve washing, chopping or grinding to increase the surface area and facilitate the extraction process. And we saw when we were doing the previous two lectures on extraction that the larger the surface, the bigger the surface area, the better it is to extract. So, the same thing holds good here also. The third is the extraction of the dye. Use an appropriate solvent, water, alcohol or any other solvent to extract the colorant to its fullest extent from the raw material. Factors such as temperature and extraction time can affect the outcome. If we are not careful about temperature control and extraction time, it may get overheated and we may lose the material or the material can get decomposed. Common extraction methods include boiling, cold soaking or fermentation, but not every natural dye source is fermented, not every natural dye source is cold soaked. So, for an appropriate material, an appropriate extraction process needs to be identified and practiced. Then straining and filtration. Strain the dye solution to remove solid particles and impurities. Filtration process such as using cheesecloth or fine mesh help achieve to get a clear dye solution because these particles can interfere with the dyeing process. So, it is important to strain it or to filter it. Standard process for dyeing requires mordanting. Mordants are substance that enhance the color fastness and adherence of the dye of the fabric. Common mordants include alum, iron and tannins. However, we have used 
rare earth salts as well as biomodernants and enzymes. Fabrics are typically soaked in modern solution sometimes before dyeing which we call pre-modenting or sometimes the modernants are treated after dyeing which we call as post-modenting. There is a third method of doing it where it is simultaneously added into the dye bath and that is called metamodenting or simultaneous modenting. Then comes the dyeing process. Immerse the fabric or material in the prepared dye bath. The duration, temperature and agitation during the dyeing process impact the color intensity. Longer dyeing times often result in deeper colors, but sometimes the color starts dissolving. So, it depends on which colorant we are working with. It is not a universal rule that the longer we dye, the darker it will be. It is a myth. It depends from dye to dye which dye we are using and accordingly that dye's behavior whether it will require longer period of time or whether it can just have the optimum time period for dyeing. Then comes rinsing. After dyeing, rinse the dye material thoroughly to remove excess dye and mordant. This step helps improve color fastness and reduces the risk of bleeding. Well, we do not in our laboratory, we do not rinse it immediately. My experience goes to say that when we leave the dyed fabric overnight without rinsing, the penetration of the dye is much better. And therefore, what we do, we do the rinsing after overnight and in the next morning we wash it with cold water which is not acidic or basic. So, it has to be tap water which does not have minerals to interfere with the color and that helps in color retention and reduces the risk of bleeding. Role of pH adjustment. Check and adjust the pH of the dye bath if necessary. Some dyes are sensitive to pH changes and maintaining the optimal pH ensures consistent color results. I will give you another example where the bath is made acidic by adding vinegar when silk or wool is added. Now, there also vinegar is nothing but dilute acetic acid. So, it is altering the pH, but very mildly, but nevertheless that is required for the amide link uh, fabric which are silk and nylon. Post mordenting which is optional in some cases a second mordenting step after dyeing can be employed to modify or shift the color. And we have seen in the first slide that how pre mordenting with the same dye extract and post mordenting with the same dye extract can give completely different colors and shades. This step is optional and depends on the desired outcome that we wish to have. Drying, allow the dyed, dyed material to dry in air, avoid exposure to direct sunlight as prolonged exposure can lead to fading. And just in the last lecture, we were talking about photo fading and therefore, it is not recommended to put the dyed fabric directly under the sun. It should be always dried under shade and by air drying, not even by putting it in oven or putting hot iron because all extra heat will make the dye fade. Dye fixing and finishing. Now, slowly towards the end of the dyeing process, we use some auxiliaries which are called dye fix or dye finishing agents. Some natural dyes may require a fixing agent to improve color fastness. 
finishing processes such as ironing or steaming can also enhance the stability of the color. As what we say that when you want the color to settle properly, then just have a steam ironing which is not very hot on the fabric and that will make the set color settle into the fibers very well. Documentation as I mentioned that is keeping records, a, a detailed record of the entire process including the type and quality of raw materials is very, very important. Otherwise, you may not be able to repeat your own experiments yourself, extraction methods, mordenting details, dyeing condition and any other deviation that you have practiced. If you have changed any parameter, you must mention it in the document that is the record keeping. The re documentation aids in reproducing consistent results. Today you may do the experiment, tomorrow somebody else may want to do the same experiment of dyeing. If it is a written document, he or she can follow it verbatim and then the results will be consistent. But if there is nothing written and you just describe orally to somebody that this is how I did, I did mordenting and then I did dyeing and then I did rinsing and then I treated it with finishing agent, that is not enough because you are just rattling out only the processes. You are not talking about what was the quantity of dye that you took, what was the amount of time that you allowed it to uh, dye, what was the mordenting conditions and so on. And when we will be doing lectures related to dyeing of cotton, silk, wool, polyester, nylon, you will see that there is a recipe always given with the dyeing process. Then comes quality control, conduct tests for color fastness, wash fastness, light fastness to ensure that the dyed material meets required desired quality standards. Unless we set a parameter, how do we see whether it has adhered to that quality or not? Chemical management system. It is very important in today's time, but before we go into that, I would like to also mention that environmental considerations are very important. Dispose of waste material responsibly considering environmental sustainability is now very imperative, very important and should be of utmost importance to everyone who is practicing natural dyeing. By following these steps, artisans and dyers can achieve standardized and reproducible results in natural dyeing processes. Adjustment to the process may be necessary based on the specific characteristic of the natural dye and the intended application. So, unless and until we are conscious about the fact that we have to make a standardized process for natural dyeing, we have to optimize the usage of chemicals, we will not be able to attain eco friendliness nor will be sustainable process. So, we have to then align our process flow chart with practices of good chemical management system CMS and that is also applicable in natural dyeing. Preparation of dye recipe just like synthetic dyes is a must. We cannot proceed for chemical management system unless we have with us a dye recipe. Basic standard practices are, we have to remember that come what may, we have to have quality standards for natural dyes. 
So, if quality standards for natural dyes vary widely, so it is necessary to the dyeing standards. Industry actually loathes this lack of consistency. They want the results to be consistent. For attempting repeatability of shades of textile dyeing, the recommended procedure as mentioned should be followed strictly and it should be always practiced that way. Always use stainless steel dye bath. Why I am telling you this? Because there is a small story behind this. I was made to do dyeing in a very old dye house in Gorakhpur, where it was all rusted. It was an iron dyeing machine and not a steel. So, what happened? Although I had modented my fabric, but the iron of the dye bath actually interfered with the dyeing process and the shade completely changed from red to purple. I had told you that alizarine with, uh, alizarine with alum gives red color, but if I put alizarine with iron then it gives dark purple color. So, the entire batch got spoiled. Water hardness should not be more than 300 ppm and this we have talking, we have been talking all along that water quality also matters. If there are dissolved minerals, they will definitely interfere with the dyeing process and will cause the shade or the color intensity to change. Yarn to water ratio should be at least 1 is to 20. Sometimes we even take even more dilute situations, but this is the optimum. If we take fabric to water ratio 1 is to 20 or yarn is to water ratio 1 is to 20, it is perfect keeping in mind that water should not have a hardness of more than 300 ppm and the vessel should always be stainless steel. Otherwise, one would not get the desired color and it would be very ugly looking dyed material. Repeatability in natural dyeing. It is a myth that natural dyeing dyed fabric cannot be duplicated in the same shade. If a proper standard procedure is followed and the dye source is evaluated for its dye content prior to dyeing, shade repeatability is possible and certain. Same dyeing condition, same modern, same dye source can assure repeatable results provided we have standardized all the processes. Commercially available natural dyes do not have this problem because they are already standardized. So, direct plant source for its extraction of the dye. Efficient extraction of dye content by modern techniques can help overcome change in shade production. Several efficient extraction methods have been discussed in the previous lecture which are superior to conventional method such as sonicator, supercritical fluid, microwave, freeze drying and enzyme extraction. Subsequently, the dye content of the extract needs to be evaluated and accordingly the calculation of the dye amount should be taken as per the weight of the fabric OWF. Recipe needs to be designed accordingly, keeping all other conditions similar. Commercially available dye extracts are already standardized as I mentioned in the previous slide. Why this is important is something that should be understood. If we add randomly dye and fabric and we have not made any measurements of the weight of the fabric and the weight of the dye powder, 
we would land up in getting different shades at every batch. So, a standardized procedure helps us in keeping the shades consistent, in keeping the process consistent. Therefore, standardization of natural dyes involves establishing uniform procedures and criteria for production, characterization and application of these dyes. This is crucial for ensuring consistency in color, quality and performance. Here is a general process for the standardization of natural dyes. Selection of raw material. Time and again I am telling you this that we need to select the raw material correctly. What does it mean? It means that first we should involve some kind of testing to test whether it has sufficient amount of dye content or not before proceeding that is what it means. So, it is important to identify and select the source of plant or animal or mineral that will be used to extract natural dye. Consider factors such as sustainability, availability and cultural significance. And I will give you a small example. In madder that is also called manjist, the stems also have dye, the roots have dye and the leaves also have dye. But all the three parts of the plant have different content in terms of percentage. Now, if we choose leaf and stem instead of root, if we use stem or leaves, then it is not a good idea because the maximum dye content is present in the root. Hence, the selection of raw material is very crucial we should see which part of the plant has the maximum dye content to start with or to begin with. Every step needs to be standardized. It is not that I have standardized the beginning and so the process entire process has been standardized. No, at every stage that is the next stage comes is the extraction of dyes. Develop standardized method for extracting dyes from the chosen raw material which has the maximum dye content. This may involve techniques like maceration, fermentation or extraction with solvent. Optimize extraction conditions such as temperature, time and pH. Then characterization, it is a very important part of standardization process. Establish criteria for assessing the quality and properties of the extracted dyes. This may include color intensity, light fastness, wash fastness and chemical composition. Analytical techniques like chromatography or spectroscopy may be employed for characterization. So, we should know what is the dye content and what are the molecules that are giving this color intensity. Standardization of the processes define standardized procedures for dyeing textile or other materials with natural dyes. This includes setting parameters for dye concentration, dyeing time, temperature or any other auxiliary chemicals that are to be used in the process. So, at every stage repeatedly I am telling you that we need to standardize. Then comes color matching. Develop a system for color matching to ensure consistency in the final product. This might involve creating a color reference system or using established color models like C lab values to quantify and reproduce colors accurately, usually done on a color matching machine. So, there is a machine which is like a spectrophotometer and that machine is used for assessing 
the C lab value, it also gives the K by S value which is the dye depth value of a given fabric. Testing and quality control, establish testing protocols to evaluate the quality and performance of the dyed materials. This can include testing for color fastness under various conditions that is exposure to light, washing and abrasion. So, when we do this testing of light and wash fastness, we ensure that the dyeing that has taken place is now embedded and that it is not going to succumb to any kind of fading so easily. Of course, fading will take place in due course of time, we cannot stop it, but it will not happen immediately, color will not bleed and therefore, we have to be very careful about these dyeing testing and quality control. This is how a color matching system machine looks like. It is a very simple machine, a simple spectrophotometer where spectra scan uh, is taken and we get the result. Fine tuning of the standardization process, documentation and certification I said is essentially important. Document the standardized procedure that you have developed including extraction methods, dyeing processes and quality control measures. Certification standards can be developed to ensure that products meet specific criteria for being labeled as standardized natural dyes. Because if we have done that procedure carefully and we have got the repeated result, certification of such standard methods are possible. Environmental and social consideration, integrate considerations for environmental sustainability and social responsibility into the standardization process. This may involve ensuring that the extraction and the production processes are eco-friendly and socially responsible. Because after all, whenever we are talking about natural dyes, we are also talking about the fact that they are environmentally safe and unless and until we ensure ourselves that we are doing everything in a systematic manner and we are not making any negative impact on the environment, then we are actually talking about environmental sustainability and social responsibility. Otherwise, if we are just talking about it and not practicing it, uh, that is not a good idea. Education and outreach, provide training and education for producers, artisans and other stakeholders involved in the natural dye industry. Because just doing it yourself is not enough. You have to also train and make people aware that there are standard procedures available and those procedures should be made known to the producers who are making it commercially, to artisans who are making artifacts and to other stakeholders. This will help in disseminating knowledge about standardized processes and encourage the adoption of best practices. Unless and until we ourselves practice standardized practices, we cannot preach it. We have to practice it ourselves and standardize, develop standardized processes for natural dyeing. Then only we are capable of teaching others and you know advocating about it. Proper standardization of processes. Standardization of natural dyes refers to the process of ensuring consistency and reliability in color, quality and properties of natural dyes derived from plant, animal and mineral sources. This is important in industry such as textiles, cos cosmetics and food, where natural dyes are used for coloring various products 
And here are some key aspects of standardization of natural dyes. Source selection, repeatedly I am telling that we need to select the plant part which has the maximum number amount of colorant. So, standardization begins with the selection of high quality raw material. Different plants, insects and minerals yield natural dyes with varying colors and properties, identifying the ideal sources for specific colors and ensuring their availability in consistent quality is very crucial and equally important. Extraction methods like standardized extraction methods are developed to extract the dyes efficiently and consistently from their natural sources. Factors such as temperature, pH, solvent choice and extraction time can significantly affect the quality and quantity of the extracted dye. So, we have to standardize again I am telling you that at every stage whether it is selection of the raw material or whether it is the selection of the appropriate extraction method. So, many methods of extractions have been discussed. So, which one is appropriate for a particular dye that you have to find out and standardize. Then it is also important to find the chemical composition of the extracted dye. Analyzing the ke chemical composition of natural dye which has been extracted helps us to understand their properties and ensures consistency. Techniques such as high performance liquid chromatography HPLC, mass spectrometry MS, nuclear magnetic re resonance NMR spectroscopy are commonly used for this purpose. Color measurement and analysis, color is a critical aspect of natural dyes. Standardization involves precise measurement and analysis of color using photo spectrometry. Also colorimetry, this ensures that the color produced by the natural dye remains consistent across different batches and applications. So, when we know the chemical composition, then only we can comment yes this procedure is correct, this is how we have standardized and this is what the repeatability test is showing. Dyeing procedures also have to be standardized and when they are established to ensure reproducibility and consistency in the dyeing process, then we are assured that we will get the same dyed fabric from batch to batch. So, remember in the first few slides we were looking at the drawback and this is how we can overcome this drawback. Factors such as dye concentration, temperature, duration of dyeing and pH of the dye bath are controlled to achieve the desired colored intensity and fastness properties. Quality control and assurance, regular quality control checks are conducted throughout the manufacturing process to monitor the quality and consistency of the natural dyes. And if we do not practice this, then we cannot achieve what we wish to achieve and there will be no standardized procedure. This includes testing of color, fastness, light fastness, wash fastness and other rela relevant properties. So, it is a very wholesome testing procedure when we are talking about quality control and assurance. It is not just we test one parameter and we say ok, this is a standardized procedure. No, at every level whether it is testing color fastness for light or wash or whether it is the K by S value matching or the C lab value matching, at every stage it has to be checked then only it is properly quality controlled. So, proper documentation of standardized processes is very necessary and time and again I have been talking about this including source identification, 
extraction methods, dyeing procedures and quality control measures is all very important. Clear labeling of natural dyes with information on the composition, color properties and usage instruction enhances transparency and facilitates traceability. Now, when we talk about transparency and traceability, we should know which where this dye has come from. So, if I say that I get a dye sample raw material from northeast and we also get from down south, they cannot always have a consistent result. So, we need to check the dye content in them and then decide which one we have to go ahead with or what are the approximations if the dye content of both the varieties are known to the, us. By standardizing natural dyes, manufacturers can ensure consistent quality meet regulatory requirement and build trust with customers who prefer environmental environmentally friendly and sustainable dyeing options. Standardization ensures that dye meets safety and quality regulations set by the authorities such as Food and Drug Administration that is FDA. Because if you and I standardize and there is no body to ensure that it has been done in the right way, it has no meaning. So, FDA does that job and they make it uh, that yes this process has been properly standardized. So, natural dye industry needs continuous improvement. Continuous improvement establish a system for ongoing monitoring, evaluation and improvement of the standardization process. This may involve incorporating new research findings, adapting to changes in raw material availability and addressing emerging issues. By following a comprehensive standardization process, the natural dye industry can produce consistent and high quality product while promoting sustainability and cultural preservation. With the resurgence of natural dyes and its demand in the current times, standardization has major significance. Some of the Indian standards that we were able to publish and I am very happy and proud to tell you that they have been published very recently in 2019 and 2020. So, now we have Indian standards for catechu dye, lac dye, punica which is pomegranate skin, rheum emodi, bio indigo, madder which is rubia cordifolia red canna flower, red balsam flower, tectona leaves and terminalia arjuna. And this could be obtained after huge amount of experimentation and we were able to publish this through Bureau of Indian Standards. Thank you.